How's it going? How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, <not. laughs> I'll sit down with you and we'll talk about the uh, um, the management service. I think the chaining, this, this could be its own kind of session, right? We could talk about that. By the way, I just uh, did the uh, Lake U with an external API endpoint. Um, this is huge. This is this is a completely different mindset, and um, we're just gonna need to productize it. We need to publish a NuGet package called Lake U that basically gives you Azure as an option, Azure Service Bus, or uh, you could have the the local events, and you could publish and subscribe and whatnot. You know, we'll see how that one that one pans out. It's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very, 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 very interesting. Okay, let's do OData. You want to do OData with me? Is that what it uh, is? If we must. <laughs> this OData thing. <laughs> okay, let's let's do this. Let's go to uh, OData Neo. I have this part. Did you know that you could pin projects and you're like right click on Visual Studio? You can pin a bunch of projects, you know, so you know you're you're gonna come back to these. Did you know that? You don't use anything. You just keep them uh, on running all the time. So I, I've got um, on my Windows taskbar, I've got Visual Studio pinned, and I just right click on it and pick one of my previous solutions, and I'm done. I'm straight in. You know what I want to do? I want to be able to go and say, do you know what? Uh, you know, streaming. Streaming deck. Do you know the? Do you know these things? Have you ever heard of them? Streamers use these all the time, right? Yeah, they're. It's so, basically just a pad full of programmable buttons, right? So you really, can... yeah, that's all that it is. And I think these buttons are basically little screens, right? Oh. Like you can modify the content on the button itself. That's why it's super expensive. But I mean, not super, but it's kind of expensive and. Um, what I want to do is to have all my projects and Visual Studio kind of pop up as one of these buttons. And if I just, oh, it's OData, click that one button. Boom. You got OData and you going. You know, you could kind of wire. I think there's a smaller version of it. Let's see. There's a tiny, tiny version of it that's much better than this one is too big. Let's see. No, this is this is a huge one. There it is. This one is perfect. So you have a handful of projects, right? And basically what you want to do is just go and say, hey, I want to, I just want to launch this one particular project, right? And then it does it for you. What do you think about that? It's pretty cool, right? Yeah, pretty, um, pretty fancy stuff. I've seen people doing all sorts of weird stuff with them. Like they took it into like their home automation systems and stuff. So they can, well, you know, oh, I'm going live now. I'm about to stream. So they whack a button. It changes all the lighting. Sets all lighting. Up, fires yeah. up a webcam. Kicks off a Twitch stream. Yep. You know, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm with you. Of... I remember when um, If This Then That came out. And it, it was like super popular. And then um, all the big companies started talking about their virtual assistants. You know, Cortana, Siri, Hey Google, whatever it is. Um, and um, they basically, one of the big things that, you know, early on became like a big selling point was they could talk to if this, then that. Right. And sort of like the combination of like that sort of audible extension where you could just say to a, an extension, hey, get me going, you know, issue a command and it would just do it all. And I thought, oh, that's where things are going to go these days. But yep. it seems yep. that people still like to push buttons. <laughs> it's kind of fun isn't it yeah oh hey i remember now it was your turn you were supposed to make this pass uh yeah yes uh yeah so i pulled the code and i don't think you committed everything last time that's I think it, something it missing are you sure no no i committed everything this is an accusation it, do it just doesn't compile <laughs> You gotta, you gotta write code. You know, it, it, you gotta have code so it get compiles. <laughs> Let's do it. Show me. Okay, uh, here's Morty. Let's see what we can do here then. Right. So if I. So if you get latest. Does it? Wait. Does it? 
just like, let, let, commit. You know, it, you know, it says fail, commit, right? Like, literally in the in the thing. Huh? Did I actually not commit the code because I can see it in GitHub? You know. Okay. Oh, by the way, Paul, should we? So let me ask you this: Is internal mock ready? Like, if I merge that pull request and publish it, that would fix the problem with running uh, in debug versus release mode, right? It it does and it doesn't. So um, what I found is that the current implementation is dependent on some static stuff in the yeah. service, and because that's static, if you run multiple tests um, yes. like in parallel, then you yeah. end up with this problem where they're all dependent on that static thing, right? Um, even though you you know with with static variables, even if you've got sorry, even if you've got um, different instances. Static mm -hmm. stuff is global to the process, isn't it? So you end up in this problem where obviously it, it, it's like a shared va value, isn't it? It's, it's shared mm -hmm. across the entire instance of the running application. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you just run into conflicts. But yeah, I did fix the initial problem, which was that we couldn't, or for some reason, it wasn't um, mocking those private methods properly as expected. Okay. Um, and the the test case that I added actually proved that, but it it also conflicted with another test case that was in there because of this mm -hmm. threading problem. So I'd identified that it would fail in certain situations, but if you sit there just rerunning the tests on repeat, mm -hmm. like nine times out of ten they succeed, and then on the tenth time they just clash because of this threading problem. So I'm like, is it solved? Is it not solved? Uh, I would say the original problem is solved, but there is still a problem. Um, so we just need to figure out um, within internal mock, is there something else that we can do that um, allows us to solve the problem in the way that we've currently solved it, but without the static variables in the service? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you think mm -hmm. about it. So there's a, I think there was a, a static um, field and there's like a static method that you reference and you give the field value to or the, the method relies on that field value. So if we get rid of those mm -hmm. um, and can sort of do it instance based in some way, then we get rid mm -hmm. of the threading problem. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I just figured that somebody who understood harmony in a bit more detail than I did, or perhaps something about the runtime, sorry, something no about the runtime or something like that. It, it, it's something that like requires somebody who's got a bit more knowledge of like the underlying fundamentals well, of well, what's really going on. Well, the dude that wrote Harmonies in Ukraine, I hope he's still alive. I really do. He's a really nice guy. That's why I'm sponsoring him because we'll see, you know. Well, so, hopefully he'll uh, appreciate you sponsoring and come on sometime and help us with the problem. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. I should, I should just, do, you know what we should do, Paul? We should just go get, go in a helicopter and just pull him out. You know what I mean? And the helicopter just has O data written on it, like you know, O data forces. You know, you know, just drop in, pick up the dude, be like, "Sir, we need you immediately," and then pick you up. And then after he fixes the problem, we just put him back there. Because it's no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're done now. You've, no. You've... <laughs> <laughs> You've done your useful bit. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> oh god! Typical American style. <laughs> yeah, that would be, wouldn't it? Right? <laughs> the American reputation precedes it. <laughs> I should laugh about this. I really pray for these people. I hope they, I hope they, uh, the war is over. And uh, but yeah, he's he's actually in Ukraine. Like if you go to his, um, if you go to his uh, uh, GitHub. He's literally saying, "Hey, I won't be able to support for long. I'm we're at war and all that. It's it's actually heartbreaking. But uh, yeah, that that dude is a genius, dude. He's he's uh, let's see, is it har harmony.net? I think. Where did he put it? Harmony. It's called Harmony, right? I think so. So C sharp." Logic Harmony Control. Is it? Is that it? Harmony Core. Hold on. He has this as a NuGet package. So that's that's how we're gonna find that guy. NuGet. 
Let's see, Harmony. Yeah, Lib Harmony, there it is. And if you go to his uh, GitHub project, project website, is that where GitHub is? Yeah, there it is. So did he put the, the sign? Yeah, that's that's this guy. This guy right here. Oh, so he's in Sweden now. Okay. Or was he always in Sweden? I, I don't remember. But anyway, that, that dude... I think that's the dude. That's the dude that did Harmony, dude. Like, at least the, uh, the highest contributor, right, to this project, right? That's why I'm sponsoring him, because he's a good guy. But anyway, so this is the library that he built, right? And we um we need to figure out a way to uh to solve that problem because this is the concept of partial mocking right okay so you're saying if we run all the tests at once they fail but if we run them one by one they pass because they can't well run. so here's the thing right if if i run all of the internal mock tests then I get low, that clash and I get it intermittently. So it, it's clearly some sort of weird race condition, right? Now, if I run, um, as you can see here, if I run all of the um, ODA and NEO tests, but I, I run them, um, I debug all the tests and step through all of the exceptions that happen that we expect to happen, right? then all of the tests except the one that you wrote last week effectively pass nice now if i just if i just run them normally they will fail I, I get a lot of failures yeah. yeah and what i found was the reason if you look over here in my solution view i've pulled in internal yeah, mark internal directly yep. into yep. the neo library and what i found is happening if we look at the actual exceptions in one of the non-expected to fail tests say nothing right? it didn't throw an exception it just ignored it completely yeah yeah it just failed to throw the exception which to tells me that whatever it it was supposed to do with regards to mocking it just didn't do it and th there seems to be some difference in how the runtime functions when you just run it or when you run it with a debugger attached i don't and know i don't know is. enough about it in order yeah. to be like helpful here at this point now it's probably something that i could dig into but as you cottoned on to, you know, opening statement on this call, it's like, yeah, I'm buried in some currently quite complex problems of my own. Uh, and I'd like to sort I, of get I, to the bottom of that before I start worrying about this. I have no idea what kind of problems you're buried into. I, I thought you were just uh, sitting on a beach, you know, drinking tea or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's easy to stand stuff, right? No one has any problems with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Let's go back to Odata Neo. We, we could look into the. I look into this problem at some point. Uh, let's go back to Neo and see uh, what we can do. So now, um, so if you go back to the actual failing test, so you have the code. It's failing, right? There it is. That's that's the good. Yeah. Thing. So what I found was, um, uh, where was it? One of these is the service, isn't it? That's actually called. Yeah, this one here. If I go to implementation. Um, okay, maybe I'm just talking crap because yeah, you're, I'm you're sure having... I had a method, and it's and it said it couldn't find. The, oh no, it was one of the test methods, wasn't it? It was one of the test methods it was complaining about, and it was saying that the the method was missing. Um, yeah. New test. So what are we in here? We're testing foundations, aren't we? No queries. It was one of these. Hang on. Yeah. So there should be a method in here, which I remember at the, the end of our last session. Um, generate random. It's there. Don't know then. Maybe I was just having a funny five minutes in the week, and I was just like. But I think it was this method that was missing. Yeah. Like for some reason, like I haven't done a get latest or anything today. So yeah. I already had it. 
but for some reason the compiler was just not playing ball with me. Maybe it was because of something I was doing with internal mock and I managed to confuse the compiler or Visual Studio or something. I notice Visual Studio is a bit weird sometimes. Like I have like compile problems and I'll go in and I'll like close everything down. I'll just delete my .bs folder, clean out all my bin and object folders and just reload everything and it'll be fine again. Yeah, it's like there's some weird like caching stuff that takes place in Visual Studio, and I've just never gone to the bottom of it. Yeah, but anyway, it's a complicated, complicated program, so you know you've got to expect some weirdness to it, right? It only has a million lines of code, nothing big. Yeah, yeah, pretty basic, right? <laughs> Straightforward, no problem there, and that's without the .NET framework, without everything, like just just the shell. Yeah. Oh, to give you an idea of scale, um, the stuff that I'm working on um, for one particular type of transaction, Callum was telling me the other day, um, <laughs> he did a PR request and it contained the, the entire implementation for just credits. Mm -hmm. It was 3,000 lines of code. Something like you can't do that. Lines. You can't do that. <laughs> and I was just like, oh. and he said, oh, you've got to code review it all. And I said, well, to my standard or to Hassan's standard? And he said, to both. And I said, right, it's all crap. Throw it out. Start again. Yep, it's, yep, exactly. <laughs> you should shut it down. This is exactly what I would do. I would just go shut it down because the PR needs to only contain one particular uh, uh, feature in a, fu like one function in yeah. one service, right? And that's it. You can't yeah. push for anything else. And everything yeah. should be stable. Yeah. yeah, I would immediately. I just go shut it down. It was like there. six cul-de-sacs worth of tests and implementations, no, and all the interfaces and everything. And I was just like, nope, you kidding me? Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> no, you can't do that. Yeah. No, you, you should, you should enforce pairing. Like you should have Shannon and and Callum pair with each other. That's how you bring her up to speed. But also, he he gets to kind of slow down a little bit and kind of do it anyway. Yeah, we've had some time constraints. Um, yep. So Callum's been doing, bless him, he's been doing a lot of this stuff um, out of hours um, voluntarily. So I, I can't fault him for that. But it does yep. make it difficult when you want to sort of pair program things or follow, you know, a proper pattern where, you yep. you know, yep. like we do, excuse yep. me, like we do with Neo. Yep. Um, anyway, we should probably write some code, shouldn't we? uh so i was talking to someone about this yesterday i said listen man i don't care about your deadlines or your plans you know we will take the right time actually funny enough do you know what uncle bob you know about robert c martin right he just published this this morning literally this morning i don't know who pissed him off but someone did he published this he said check this out he said uh programmers must never offer the option of bad code to managers who demand speed Nobody goes faster when slogging through a mess. Messes slow down everyone and everything forever. Yeah. Uncle and I, I, I can attest to that from yeah. personal experience. If you rush something, you might get out the door, but then you'll spend the next, let's say it takes you a month to write it all when you've rushed it through. You'll mm -hmm. spend the next year debugging it. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, nope. It's absolute hell. Whereas if you just took the two months to write it properly instead of the month, Yep. you wouldn't have that year of hell. You'd still yep. have bugs in it because yep. inevitably software it, has it, bugs. Yeah, but it, it will be much more It'll maintainable. Be yeah, a lot more stable. Yeah. Um, and do you know what? I've gone through several versions of um, software this way in just in our, our current architecture, yep. just where I've been put under so much pressure, where I've just left out certain key parts in the process. I've not properly TDD'd everything, things like that. And it, it does. It just, it results in absolute hell. Yep. I said this time around, I said, look, I'm going to follow proper software yep. process the way it should be done. You know, learn from my past mistakes, so to speak. Um, and this is where I started approaching you about the standard. Yep. Because, yep. you know, the, the more stuff I do to the standard, uh, the more confidence I have that, you know, anything that we actually do push is yep. actually correct yeah because i can actually go back to the business and say well i know it's correct because i've got a whole suite of unit tests that confirm exactly. that it's correct exactly and exactly integrations and yep. yeah so yeah yes sir <laughs> okay let's make this pass zoom in a little bit because it's, it's too small let's uh, do it which bit this bit oh just the code bit yep just the code bit okay so, so this the, is the error 
So this is failing proper, right? Proper. So let's make failing it failing proper. Yeah. So th this is saying that um, expected the actual query to be this. Uh, right. Okay. So let's grab this because this is what it was expecting. Oh, this is totally randomly generated, dude. Just so you know. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just put these things in here so we can compare them with me having made no changes. Ah, see? By the way, the fix is really small. Can you tell? Yeah, I can already see it. Ah! <laughs> God. Oh, I'm making the right pigs here, this, aren't I? You can tell I, I totally prepared for this presentation, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so you're okay. just adding this closing thing for some reason, that's all. Yeah. Or, or you're forgetting to emit it. So... Um, get so join. Uh, where are we doing the replacement stuff? Oh, this is the test, isn't it? Yeah, that's. I'm looking at the test and going, I can't see the logic that's breaking this. <laughs> yeah, no shit. You've really broke. You I... break. <laughs> <laughs> Proper <laughs> right. This is what working with you in the week does. That's how it breaks. Uh... <laughs> to be honest with you, like, dude, listen, you know you're like you're frying your brain like how you just put the time and effort it's amazing you know and still you show up and we build oh data neo together and all that that's that's i that's admirable you know i commend that yeah. okay i cool. just say some days i get to the end of the day and it's funny because like like yesterday the wife said i don't know how you do it i said what do you mean she said well you get into bed and within five minutes you're just out cold done <laughs> and i'm like you do realize like it, like it's not common not it's common knowledge amongst like medical professions that like your brain is the thing that uses like most of the energy in the day so yep. if you spend your entire day just suffering like real brain teasers by the end of the day you're so shattered that you just plonk you're done out like a light so you're done for life and, uh, like i remember i used to get because it's quite funny because I, I come from quite a large family my dad's one of ten right nice. and they're all um tradesmen they work in like building trades so you know we've got plastic physical, we've got blade, physical stuff players. Yeah. yeah we got you know plumbers electricians all sorts and um i, I used to get so much grief because they're like oh you you want to get a proper job not just sitting in front of a desk all the time and it's like seriously this is harder work this is you, real work <laughs> this is real work yeah it's harder than you know you know <laughs> <laughs> it's not that trivial at times yeah okay i might not be like breaking me bones and cutting myself and you know i'm breaking my brain brain cells are going <laughs> like, geez, yeah you feel it at the end of the day so, god right it looks like but um, by the way just so you know there's something for you to know i i don't know if you have achieved that yet uh at some point in time i don't want to say you become numb I want to say it becomes just a part of your stream. And this is why a lot of people come to me and be like, how can you do all these things? And I just don't feel like I'm doing anything. <laughs> like, it became, you know, when you're driving, it's just second nature. You're not even thinking about driving anymore. I mean, in your case, it's probably yeah. difficult because the steering wheel is on the wrong side. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you drive this way. That would That would confuse. I will never ever drive in england because it's gonna get me killed you know just the fact that i'm on the right Probably. side and i have to look left and i don't see other than chairs just, just things well, behind or you're gonna get to a roundabout or something and just not know how to get off it's over it'll be over <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know i heard in sweden there are no left turns they're all right turns oh wow I don't know. that's that can't be true surely right <laughs> sorry I'm just having. Yeah, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it, it becomes part of your, it becomes like breathing. Like to me, engaging with people and writing code and blogging and doing streams like these, I, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. So I can still come around four o'clock, you know, 4 p.m. and just sit down and just do whatever I want. I don't feel like I've done anything. And maybe I'm not working. <laughs> Well, they do say it's 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 not really work if you enjoy it, right? Exactly. So, I, I mean, love this. I don't know if you've noticed, 
but I love <laughs> this, you know. Every I, every job in programming, I, or just in IT in general, that I've ever applied for, I've always said, like, I, I do what I do because I enjoy it. And first and foremost for me, like the first five years before I even considered applying for any sort of job um, was like mostly just me like building stuff myself. And I remember when I got my first job in programming and I tell this story to people quite a lot. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, people ask me, oh, how did you get into the career? You know, how, how did you do it? And I remember sitting down in front of the, the CTO who was interviewing me at the time and he said, well, you know, he plonks down this massive stack of papers. He said, look, there's 200 people applying for this job and they've all got degrees. And I said, well, I don't have a degree. And he said, well, what makes you think that you can keep up with these people that have got these um, these degrees under their belts? Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, well, I, it's not that I think I can keep up with them as such, but I know I can do the job, right? Mm -hmm. So like... There, there may be people that are like smarter than me, and I'm sure there are. There's a lot of people out there that are way smarter than me. Um, mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I don't think that a degree makes you a good programmer. I nope. think that nope. it's, a, it's a mindset. Right? Yeah. It's and I'm telling and I you, said man. To the guy at the time, and I said, "Look, take me on." I said, "I'll tell you what." He was at, he was advertising the job at a pretty good salary, and I said, "I'll tell you what, I'll take the job during the probationary period." for half my salary mm -hmm. but if i get to the end of my probationary period and you're happy you not only give me what you're offering but you give me a pay rise on top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and if you're not happy i'll just walk away no questions asked how's that sound and i knew that i'd been referred there from an agent and over here agency fees are quite high i don't know what they're like over in america but they, they normally want something like 15 20 percent of your first year's salary it's like a signing bonus mm -hmm. just for referring someone mm -hmm. so of course this this guy's like what is this guy on he's, he's like so confident and and i'm like well i know i can do it because you know and i pulled up a laptop there and then and i went here you go website i've built and I was applying for a job at a content management company. Mm -hmm. And and it was like, you guys do content management. I've built websites. Yeah, okay, I might not build them quite the way you do because I lack that experience. But hey, that's what I'm here for. This is why I'm applying for a junior position. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it just went from there. And, and I, I was lucky enough to join a team full of like really smart people. And I learned a lot really quickly. And of course, never looked back, right? 20 years mm -hmm. later here i am getting picked on by you mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so where did this because i thought trim was supposed to trim both ends of the yeah that yeah that's that's the thing i thought see you tried to do something smart and it kind of this is why last time you kept laughing and bragging and saying oh look magic you know or, well, it, or, it but, worked until you added the extra properties, and then for yeah. some reason it didn't. Well, that's, and... that's that's what Mike Tyson says: every man has a plan until they get knocked in the face. So, so hey, hey, hey. Every, every programmer has a working code until until the until, until an exception occurs. <laughs> Just can't get staff these days. <laughs> <laughs> right. So for each each of my parts, split prompt join. Where are the where are the commas coming from? The comma is coming from the SQL generation, right? Oh, of course, yeah, because they're not being trimmed out either. Oh, are they? is that why it's freaking out? Because you don't. Ah, uh, yeah, because the value is the closing <laughs> brace, then the comma. Oh, just add a comma in the trim thing, like like do open, close, and comma. Just add comma on line fifty-eight. Yeah, just put a comma in there. Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. Run. Let's go. Let's go, fam. Let's go. Uh, that isn't gonna fix it though. I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing things at you. Um, Let's run it. Let's see. You never know, right? Keywords. <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. It's, ah, it's, here we it's go. not gonna fix it, but <laughs> it's not gonna no. Uh, I could put a trim on the end. Of... No, I think what we should probably do is do a replace in here as well. Oh, 
ugliest hack ever, but mm. but past. <laughs> <laughs> But wait, that's dumb. <laughs> you wanted a test to pass. I made it pass. Okay, fine. <laughs> it produces and it works and everything. I mean, yeah. Like, let's, should we have a look? Should we see what the actual SQL query was that came out of it? Let's run it in debug, yeah? That's, this is one of the most entertaining thing about writing systems when I randomize it and then it throws some weird stuff at you and you're like what what just happened yeah this is perfect look at that I mean, yeah. it, it did a thing right I mean that's all we need it to do to do a thing <laughs> it, did a thing, yeah. it did the thing you asked it to do that's good enough <laughs> that's all we needed to do just do a thing that's it yeah okay uh, commit I guess. Yeah. Uh, oh, I need to like not commit my project and whatnot change. Yeah, be careful because you added, yeah. Stage. Right. So, what are we calling this? Sam! Sam! The man! How, how long have you been here? One week. One week. Oh my God. He's been waiting for a whole week. Just, you know, living rent free. <laughs> In our stream yard. It's good to see you, brother. How are you doing? Sorry, a little bit late. It's a bad morning. Oh, I'm sorry. This morning I found my yeah. hot water uh heater leaking. <laughs> Dude, you give me a heart attack. You know there's a bunch of layoffs that are happening across Microsoft. You almost give me a heart attack right now. I thought you were gonna say bad news, I got laid off. Damn, why would you do that? Just give me the no thing. No way. Dude. This is Sam we're talking about. He's like David Fowler. He's part of the furniture now. Yeah, he's... <laughs> there's, there's no way you're getting rid of people like that. Uh, it's not related to my job. It's related to my house. Yes, I know. Philippines. I know. You, you know, just you should just say that. Like, oh, bad morning with the heater. So I know <laughs> that it's not related. But <laughs> it's bad news. <laughs> Paul Wardy. Paul is like, ah, no way, you're part of the. <laughs> it's just, it's just been there too long, right? It, it takes them too long, you know. Just, he's been just even figure been out how to get rid of Sam. We just like, take them too much effort, so they're just like, ah, let's just keep paying him. It's easier. Dude, ten years, <laughs> ten years now. It's crazy. Hassan, you yes. know, uh, change or switch job is not a bad news. Yeah, it's I'm not. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> it just means, you know, kind of quadruple your salary. <laughs> That's pretty much what it means. You know, but uh, but listen, man, I'm, I'm glad everything is okay there. I know there's a bunch of kind of restructuring that's happening across the board. So, uh, you know, everything will be okay. Uh, well, it's good to see you, my friend. It's been a while. And Paul and I have been kind of moving forward. And you've kind of been playing ball. No, you know? no way. It's just moving forward. I I understand. You. Both of you finish the job. How can we How can we move forward without our fearless leader, Sam? I've been breaking stuff in style, Sam. That's that's all. I haven't really fixed anything. You fixed anything? I mean, Hassan, Hassan now says it works because you know it's passing tests. But let's let's just like not talk about that because the tests aren't really that great. Wow. Sam wrote them. To be fair, so I, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> Sam, this guy is making up accusations. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. I don't write code. I'm a manager. Managers don't write code. They just sit there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so manager, the, the duty of manager is to manage the human Make PowerPoint people. slides. They make PowerPoint slides. Human, the manager or organize the resource, not the code. Yeah. See? <laughs> By, by making PowerPoint slides and saying, hey, here, today we're going to be happy. I'm going to play a funny YouTube video for you. You know, think, think you're a history teacher who doesn't want to teach. So they bring in the TV and the, you know, the, the videotape and they just play something for you. And they just sit there checking their phone. You know what I mean? That's pretty much the, 
you know, just keep things going. <laughs> so, someone once said to me that um, most people on Earth, due to the way the system works, are in exactly the wrong job. And the reason for it is if you're good at a job, you get promoted and you keep getting promoted until you're not good at your job and then you don't get promoted anymore. Yep, that's pretty much <laughs> it. You know, you, you die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. That's pretty much all that it is. So there right. we go. All the tests are passing. I've committed the latest okay, fundamentally bad design flaw. <laughs> Gee, okay. <laughs> but it passed the test. When you, when you when you say it like that, it just kind of breaks my heart, man. Just come on. <laughs> so what have you done, Paul? Sorry. Oh, data. Oh, he's what saying what have you done? Well, what did you do? Hassan set a very low standard for the code in his uh, test criteria, and I just met that. That was all. <laughs> <laughs> and I know he says I'm just throwing accusations around, but I mean the the git commit history <laughs> doesn't lie <laughs> yep get commit history doesn't lie and i'll tell you I'll, I'll tell you something though you know this is great now we have the now we have the ability to kind of go and say send a this is the core logic we still need to do some validations right we need to go and say you know if uh, if the query that's coming in is uh, a null empty or or white space we need to throw an exception Right, which something we should work on on Monday, but this is this is a huge step, right? So, so Sam, just so you, just so you know, you know, we can now generate, you know, Paul Paul figured out the uh, the piece about sending an expression, give me back a SQL, and and we did the mapping of that, so it comes back as O data, right? So you're sending O data, turning into expression, take the expression, turn it back into O data, and shoot it from the other side. That's a full circle, my friend. That's what I meant when I said transcendence. That's exactly what it is. So just to kind of visualize things for you guys, um, the what we can do today with just the code that we have, we just need to expose it, right? And Sam, I need you to kind of get started on this uh, Odata Neo publish uh, NuGet package thing. You know what I mean? I need you to submit in a request so we can push through to this to this guy but you guys well, have to show me how to do that because i need to set up some you want me to publish some of my stuff don't you yeah I, i've never actually published anything to NuGet. but, but by the way I've... just so you know if you want to see how you can publish a NuGet package from scratch from nothing all you have to do is just go to this video here see that's the beauty of recording everything and anything because i get You're to sit down your channel again <laughs> yeah of course that's how i do it so hold on. So what did I publish? Yeah, uh, test driving CSS styles. If you look at this, this is a, no, not this one, hold on. Yeah, there you go. This is internal mock, right? If you look at the very end, I literally do, like literally all the way up to finding a, 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 a uh, icon and creating a NuGet package and then publishing this all the little details. This video here, it's three and a half hours, but you want to just focus on the last kind of 20 minutes. <laughs> I thought I spent enough time with you, Hassan. Now you're recommending me three hour long videos. You, you know this, you know this <sighs> thing? It's literally a documentation of how I built internal mock from nothing. Like I started with a new project. There is nothing there. All the way down to creating the full library. That's pretty cool, though. A lot of detail. A lot of details. A lot of details. You know, and you think, you know, oh well, the you know the vid nope, it's the whole thing. The whole thing. And it's nice. not doing just something regular. No, I'm giving you the actual whole thing. So look, I used to be young and pretty. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day. When was, was that? Three, that was only six. Ago? That was only six months ago. Look how less six white months. hair I had, you know, <laughs> compared to now. So anyway. You uh, look younger. Yeah, it's I look younger. It's probably it's listening different. to my complaints all day. It's turning you gray. I, I definitely look younger than I used to, you know. <laughs> you look younger. So 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 anyway, so just it's just dealing with Paul. I've known Paul for like now like six months. This is the impact know? I have on people. 
yeah it's just it's just not not a not a not a good friendship anyway so listen sam we can now do this today we can basically go and so just to catch you up on things we can now go and say here is an odata query we can turn that query into an expression and then we take that expression back and we can turn it into an odata query dude done no problem i would just need to expose that that's it this is what i call transcendence right what that basically means you get your odata query it turns into an i queryable the i queryable travels through your system internally and then it goes all the way to the other side and uh, uh, odata neo is sitting at the broker side go and, and kind of turn it back into into odata again or hit the entity framework with your expression and get the data next time well we need to build an orchestration service first right the orchestration service is the one that talks to the expression and the o query kind of service and then once we have this we can expose a client that can basically give us the uh, capability of turning an o data into an expression and turning an expression into o data that's it we're done here from that from that point onwards, I need to publish the alpha release, Sam. And then you and I can go on Channel 9 and talk about it, right? And maybe we'll mention Paul. I mean, he didn't do much. He just did, like, you know what I mean? Oh, it's, it's easy for Paul to trouble. publish Naked package on Naked Org. <laughs> Not a big deal. I, I, but we need to publish it under uh, the... Uh, the team? Under, the account? Un, under Microsoft, yeah. Mm-hmm. We will name it Microsoft O data blah blah blah. Yeah. Microsoft O data. Or should we just make it a standalone thing, Sam? I'll publish it as a standalone thing. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I did wonder if you wanted to do like the standard dot for all libraries that kind of are to the standard. Because I was I was gonna sort of query you on that one. Like do we have like a standard, if you like, for um, standards <laughs> around namespacing. Yep. Um, and things like you know, the only problem. That, the only problem that I have is the words "that standard" as a namespace is kind of lame. Yeah. Mm. And if you say "standard," right, that's already kind of taken by a thousand libraries, right? So I just need yeah. to think about it. We could we could just give it a different name. Like we could call it the collection or something like that. It doesn't matter. But anyway, let's let's connect on Monday, you know, and let's do the validations and the exceptions handling. And then from that onwards, we just need to link up the queries. So we're gonna have an O O token orchestration service and an O query orchestration service. And that's it. One coordination service, one client, we're ready to go. Okay, friends. Cool. And and of course, thank you all so very much. Like this is this is the first pass. This is the select statement across the board. Now that we put that structure and skeleton of this, we can now start adding the filtering and the expand and everything else in, in between. What do you think about that? Does that sound like a good idea? Oh, it's to end. Start oh. building that acceptance test, right? And now we can do acceptance tests and all that because now we're going to have an exposure layer. Like right now, we don't have any exposure layers. But once we create that client, now we're going to have exposure layers, which is going to be great. Okay, my friends, this was great. I'll talk to you on Monday. Okay, take care. Thank you. Happy Halloween. <laughs> okay, take care. <laughs> Go eat too much sugar. Take care. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>